In the previous part of the series, we set up a new view application using the Vt build system. And in this video, what we want to do is we want to start to dig into that application, understand the structure that it uh, gives us to start off with and how we can start to customize it and make it our own. Uh, and specifically, what I want to do is take all of the existing flash word work that we've done and see how we can uh, integrate it into our new Vt powered view application. So to get started on this, the first thing I'm going to do is let me pull up my code editor and I'm going to go ahead and actually open up both projects. So let me go into my uh, directory where I've been working on these projects. I'm going to open the initial flash word application and then I'm going to open up the flash word Vt application that we created in the previous video. So I'll have both of these open. And that way I can uh, copy and paste over the code from our initial application over into our FlashWord Vite application as needed. The other thing I want to do, I've already got my initial application loaded in my browser. Let's go ahead and get the Vite version powered up. So I'm going to go over to command line. I'm currently in my FlashWord Vite directory. I'm going to run that npm run dev command we talked about previously. That should start up my Vite development server. So let's open this URL in the browser. All right, and that's where we left it in the previous video. All right, so again, our goal is to take the work we've done here and integrate it into this application. Uh, to do that, let's take a look at the code for our Vite uh, powered FlashWord application and just get a general lay of the land of this uh, directory and file scaffold that it's given us. And the first thing we can observe is that in the root of the directory, there's a handful of configuration type files. For example, things like package.json, this is the configuration file for our package manager npm. And there's several things going on in here, but some key things to focus on right now are things like the dependency section. This is where we list any outside code that this project is using. And of course, uh, because we told Vite that we wanted this to be a view-based project when we created it, you could see that one of the dependencies is view itself. And then we also have what are called development dependencies. This is just outside code that we only need when we're working on this application in development mode. In other words, once we uh, deploy this on like a production server, when we're, we're actually running the application and sharing it with the rest of the world, we don't necessarily need these dependencies there. So that's why those things are kept separate. Uh, but without getting too lost in the weeds there, the takeaway here is just, here's where we list outside code that we need this project to have. Uh, and to begin with, it's just uh, Vt and view related dependencies. Down the road, if there's other packages we're interested in integrating into this uh, project, we could add them here and have NPM download them for us. Um, now, reading from this file, what NPM does is it's going to download those dependencies. It's going to put it in this node modules directory. Uh, if we take a quick look at this, we can see there's actually a lot of code within here, including things for Vue and Vite, uh, pulling from this uh, list that we have here. The reason we're seeing more than just view in Vite here are all these other dependencies is because remember that the way dependency management works is it's a tree system, right? So even though we're saying we only need Vue, Vue itself has its own dependencies. And that's what we're seeing listed here is these other dependencies who might have their own dependencies, so on and so forth. All right, and all, the, all of that is like NPM package management specific. Um, to, to summarize for what we need to know is again, this is where we list outside packages and code we want to use in this project. When we're running Vite uh, and uh, working with NPM, it's going to download that code for us and put it in this node modules subdirectory. In addition to NPM's config file, there's also a Vite specific config file that has some defaults in here. Uh, you can go to their documentation page to learn more about the different configs. Um, all of that's more advanced stuff, not things we need to worry about initially, but uh, if you come across a situation where you need to change how Vt is working, uh, this is probably a file you're going to find yourself working in. Uh, then of course we have some standard files we typically see in projects, things like our readme file where we have information about the project itself. You can see we've got some boilerplate code here about Vue and Vt. Uh, you could go ahead and delete this and start entering uh, information specific about whatever project you're creating. So maybe I'll just say flash word and I'll put a subheading here with author information. All right, now after the readme file, we also have a git ignore file. This is where we can specify uh, any files we want to be excluding from our version control system if we're using git, which we should be using, but that's a whole other topic. Uh, that information would go here. 
Uh, and then I think that's it in terms of the configuration files in the root of the directory. So let's look at this last file here, index.html. This is really the starting point of your application. Uh, this is dictating what we see when we load this application in the browser. And the first customization we can make to start to make this flash word is let's go ahead and replace the title. So we can call it flash word. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and call it version two, uh, just to distinguish from that initial version that we created. Uh, and, and throughout this video, I'll, I'll do that. I'll refer to the flash word that we're building in Vite as version two, and then the version that we built without Vite in the previous videos as version one. Uh, now, following that, uh, in the body of the page, there's two main things going on here. The first is this div with an ID of app. This is what our view instance is going to get mounted to. Uh, it's very similar to what we did in version one. If we just uh, skip back to that, I'm going to open up the index file from version one. We also had a div there with an ID app, which in our JavaScript, when we set up our view instance, we mounted it to that element. All right, we're doing the same thing here. The difference is notice in version one, we put like the, the contents of our application directly in that div. In version two with Vite, we're not doing that. We're basically starting with a blank slate and any of our content is actually going to be added from our view and our JavaScript files. All right, and that actually brings us to the next line here where we're linking in the JavaScript for this application. And what we're linking in is this main.js file, which is within this uh, source directory here. So let's go ahead and open that up. That's kind of the second major component we need to understand how this application is working. The first is the index file that gets loaded and then the main.js, the JavaScript that gets pulled in. And looking at this JavaScript file, the first thing we can observe is we've got two import statements at the top of the file here. Uh, so this is a, a shift in how we are working in version one. Here in version two, we're going to be relying heavily on JavaScript's module system, which allows us to essentially divide and conquer with our JavaScript code. We can have individual files or modules that handle specific parts of the application, and then we can import them as needed. Uh, and that's actually how we're going to be uh, pulling in the view functionality into our application. We're going to be importing what we need as modules. All right, and you can see that up here. We're importing this create app method from the view uh, dependency. All right, and this is different from version one. If we hop back to version one, back to uh, app.js, when we wanted to create our app, the way we did it is we reference it from this global view object. And the way we had access to that global view object is back in our index file, we just imported the entire view library from the CDN. All right, and importing this library gave us access to this view object, which we can access any of the view methods here. In this new version two Vite build system that we're using, um, it's a little bit different. We're gonna pull in just the, the specific methods we need from view as we need them. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is just thinking about the final production version of our code where we want to make it as small as possible. So rather than pulling in the entire view library that we might not necessarily need all of, let's just pull in the individual methods we need as we need them. All right, and that's what's happening here. Now, in terms of pulling this code in from view, uh, notice here, we're just saying view, right? I'm not saying go look for view in our node module subdirectory, which is where we know the view library is. That's where NPM put it. Uh, we don't have to specify that here. This is implied. Um, in fact, depending on your code editor, if you hover over this, it might tell you the full path to where it's actually going to find this library. Uh, and in the case of VS Code, it does do that. And you can see it, it's finding it within node modules. It's going to look within there for the view library. That's where it's going to locate it. Uh, and, and the reason it knows this and the reason it's able to automatically assume that is just because of how this project is set up, right? The fact that we have a package.json file tells my code environment that this is an NPM managed project. And from that, we can assume that any outside dependencies are in this node module subdirectory. So it's going to be able to locate that. And we can contrast that to the next import statement where we're pulling in this file called app.view. But notice we started it, uh, the path to it with a period forward slash. Anytime you see that, it's going to look for the corresponding file within this source directory. And again, this is all based on how this project is configured, how Vite set things up. Uh, it is basically saying the source directory is the main location where we're going to be writing our JavaScript code. And the way we can reference that when we're doing our imports is just with this period forward slash.
All right, so in summary, we've got two modules for pulling into main.js. The first is just what we need from the view library, the create app method. And the second is this file called app.view. And within this file, this is where we're going to define the options of our view instance. And in fact, you can see that here, we're saying create app and we're passing it this app object that we're getting from this app.view file. All right, and remember the options are just how we configure our view instance. This is where we define things like our data properties, uh, our computer properties, our watchers, our methods, all of those things we've talked about in this series leading up to now are set up in our options. And in version one, let's revisit that and see how we had set up our options there, right? So here's our create app method in version one. We just passed it this object called flash word, which we just defined right above, right? We created a basic JavaScript object. And again, our data properties, computer properties, watchers, all of those things that our view instance needs to know about, we set them up and then we passed it to the create app method. Here in version two, all of that work of setting our options, we just outsourced it to this other file called app.view. And then that's what we passed to our create app method. All right, so knowing that, let's crack into app.view and see what's going on there. Like, what is a view file anyway? This is not an extension we've dealt with. It's not a JavaScript file or an HTML file of .view. What is it? Well, let's open it up. We'll find it in our source directory, of course. And within this file, we're going to see three things. We're going to see a section of JavaScript code at the top, followed by a bit of HTML code wrapped in this template element. And then finally, some CSS styles in a style element. And in the land of view, this is referred to as a single file component or an SFC for short. And the idea with single file components is to organize the parts of your application into these components. And within the components, you have all the pieces you need for that individual component, including the JavaScript, the HTML, and the CSS. Uh, to visualize this, think about an application. You have things like, let's say you have like a navigation bar. That could be a single component that has its own HTML, its own CSS, and its own JavaScript. You might also have, uh, let's say, like a little notification menu that alerts users when they have new messages and other, you know, events on the website. That could be its own component with its own JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And you can organize your application around these components and then join together in these single file component files all the code you need for those components. And at first glance, this might seem a little weird because when we are typically learning about web development technologies, we're taught to keep things like HTML and JavaScript and CSS separate, right? There's this whole philosophy of separation of concerns. We keep them separate. Well, with single file components, we're really breaking that paradigm or we're shifting it, right? We're not breaking it because we're still organizing our application around these different concerns. But instead of dividing it based on the technology, we're defining it based on the components of our application. All right, this is going to have a lot of conveniences because, you know, imagine you're working on that notification menu. Wouldn't it be nice if rather than switching from three different files to work on the different parts of that, you had it all in one central location? That's the idea of a single file component. Now, uh, in this case, you know, I just described this idea of breaking your application into different components, and that's the point of single file components. But in this case, when we're dealing with this app.view single file component, you can think of this as like the parent component. And its job is to give us the overarching setup of the application. And then as needed, it can pull in the subcomponents that we'll need. So when we get to having things like a navigation or we build like a, a notification uh, menu, like I was talking about, those can be in their own components that we can then import and use here. And in fact, we can see a sneak peek of that in this example they set us up with. There's this hello world component that it imports and you can see how here how it's using it. It's actually able to use it just like a regular HTML element, right? You can kind of think of components as just like custom HTML elements and you define how they work in terms of their structure and their HTML, any sort of interactivity with their JavaScript and of course how they look with their CSS. All right, so that's the role in app.view. So it's within this file that we want to set up our options. So what I'm going to do, let me go back to my app.js for my version one, and I'm going to take all of the options I've come up with here, and I'm just going to grab the object itself. So starting with a curly bracket, coming down here to the end, the closing curly bracket, I'm going to copy this. I want to bring this into app.view. Uh, this is obviously JavaScript code, so I'm going to write it in the script section. And I'm actually going to delete all of this existing script code that they've given us. We're not going to use the hello world component. We're going to, you know, we'll create our own components later on. But for now, we're going to start with a blank slate. 
We're going to put in our options. And these are going to be the options of this overarching app component. And what we want to do is we just want to preference this. We want to say export default. And the reason we want to do that is because the way we're using this module or component is back in our main JS, we're importing it, right? We're importing app from uh, app.view. So what's going to happen is whatever we export from here is going to be available via this app object. And then once we get that, when we invoke views create app, we're going to pass along that app object, passing it the options of our application. Now jumping back to app.view, a modification we need to make here is in our script element, it has this setup attribute. We can go ahead and delete that. That existed because when Vite set up this project, it set it up to use something called the composition API, which is uh, one style that we can work with when building view applications. So far though, we've been working with a different style called the options API, hence all the options we've created here. Um, and in that case, we don't need that setup attribute there. Later in the series, I will talk about the Composition API, why you might want to use it versus the Options API. Um, and in that case, we would bring back that setup attribute. But right now, based on how we're building things, we want to get rid of that. Uh, but moving on, the next thing we need to address um, in this app.view single file component, if we scroll down to the template section, this is where we need to set up the, uh, the structure of this component. And where we're going to get this content, if we go back to version one to our index file, we want to grab all of this code that we wrote within our div ID app, that's going to make up our template. So starting with our H1 and then ending with our cards div, I'm going to copy that and then app.view, I'm going to replace the, the boilerplate template content they give us with our code. All right, so we've got our JavaScript, we've got our HTML structure, our HTML template, and then the final thing I want to pull in is our styles. So in version one, I'm going to open up my styles.css file. We had it separate there. We're going to actually be incorporating it into this app component. And I'm going to paste that right there. And with that, we should have all the pieces we need to actually see a working version of FlashWord in this new Vite setup. Uh, so let's go over to the browser. Let's check that out. Uh, and there we go, because of hot module reloading, you can see it already refreshed for me. I didn't even have to hit refresh. And sure enough, there's our FlashWord application. Let's go ahead and test it out. All right, perfect. It looks like it's working just as it did in our first iteration. We can see our completed message there as uh, expected. Uh, we could even uh, highlight what I was talking about in the previous video in terms of how it maintains the state of your application as it reloads. So for example, let's go back and change the text for this message. So let's go back into our template uh, and let's say uh, instead of good work, we'll just say great work. I'll save those changes, come back in the browser and you can see it's already refreshed there. So it updated that content while maintaining the state of the application, just making that whole development process a lot smoother than having to do a full refresh, enter all our answers just to see our final results again. And with that, I think this is a good stopping point. Remember, our goal with this video was just to get our existing FlashWord application up and running in this Vite uh, setup. And we've successfully done that. Uh, to conclude things, let me just run through from the beginning, you know, how we got to this point, because it is a little bit different than how we set things up in version one. So I just want to make sure we're clear on that. So let's rewind. Remember, everything starts with the index.html page. Here we define a element in which we're going to mount our view instance, and then we pull in our main.js file. Within our main.js file, we pull in what we need from the view library, which right now is just the ability to create a new view instance, which we do via the create app method. Right down here, we invoke it. We've got to pass it all the options for our new view instance. And the way we're setting up our options in this context is we're using the single file component system. So we have this app.view as our primary single file component. And within there, we have all the ingredients we need. We have our JavaScript with all of our view options. We have our HTML template that's going to be used and then styling to apply to that. All right, that gets created and then it gets mounted to our app uh, element on the page. And that's how we see the content within the body of the page. And with all of this, uh, I guess the last thing I want to highlight is I recognize that the, the organizational structure here is, is quite different than how we set things up in version one. Uh, but the underlying view code, that was all the same, right? Everything in our JavaScript options, we just copied and pasted that over. 
Same thing with our template. We didn't have to change any of our directives or any of our attributes or things like that. That was all the same. We're just pulling it into this different organizational structure that's a little bit more complex than how we did things in version one, but it's all setting us up on a path for building more complex applications so we can take advantage of JavaScript modules, of view single file components, all of these organizational things that will uh, come to appreciate as our applications grow in complexity. So let's wrap things up for this video. In the next video, we will spend the entire video talking more specifically about these single file components, these .view files, get more comfortable working with them, and hopefully by the end, uh, really come to appreciate their utility.